Welcome everyone! Some of you have been to my panels before, some of you are brand new. I hope you have a good time, whether you are into Sailor Moon or not. This is going to be comparing and contrasting the various versions between the original anime, the live action from 2003, and Crystal. So first let's just start with the opening to my panel. author Naoko Takuichi started off with a manga one-shot chapter called Sailor V which was about a superhero who fights crime. Then it was a kind of a hit so she decided to spin it off into a manga series called Sailor Moon that was originally planned to just be one arc and that was it. As we know it was not the case because there was an anime adaptation of this manga that was such a huge hit. Toei said to her, hey continue making this manga because we want to continue making shows. So what they decided to do with the ma whereas the manga was pretty much one chapter, first chapter introduced Sailor Moon, second chapter introduces the first Guardian Mercury and so, so on. Toei decided, well, Super Sentai or Power Rangers if you know, I don't know as Super Sentai, is a huge hit so let's do a tokusatsu like series with Sailor Moon where it's going to be a Monster of the Week show but with the Sailor Moon characters. So they created the first anime series, which as I said was a huge hit. Our main character is, of course, Sailor Moon. There's also another character that relates to her, so I put these two together in, the, in this panel, Tuxedo Mask or Mamoru Chiba, whereas Sailor Moon's name is Usagi Sakino. Usagi is a ditzy girl who starts off kind of selfish, she is lazy, she complains when she gets low test scores because everyone, or when kids get, everyone else gets, uh, comes to school on time and she's late but she gets in trouble for it, but it's everyone's fault but hers. As the series progresses, you come to learn that she has a good heart, that she is always seeing the best in people even if she does start out with selfish deeds. In the series, so she can transform into the main character, and she has a different types of weaponry. Her first weapon is a tiara that can destroy monsters. Then she acquires a moon stick that lets her heal beings. Tuxedo Mask uh, is a college student in this show, and they were both a prince and, pr prince and princess from thousands of years ago. She was the princess of the Moon Kingdom, and he was the princess of Earth. Pr prince. <laughs> <laughs> so, wait, um, are we going to a totally different series? Because there's probably a porno based on that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's probably so accurate. It, it, absolutely. So, they fall in love, villains attack, everything goes boom. So, I have here little clips for both Sailor Moon and, and Tuxedo Mask. Moon Prism Power, make up! <laughs> I am known as Tuxedo Mask, Sailor Moon. You have to remember that crying isn't going to solve any of your problems. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Oh. Stupid test! 
Watch where you're throwing things, bunhead. Uh, uh, sorry. 30%? <laughs> Looks to me like you better study harder next time, bunhead. <laughs> I finally understand who I really am. I have been Tuxedo Mask all along. No shit. Unless <laughs> people will be destroyed. I'm convinced the only way to stop this war is to eliminate Metalia and wipe out her evil energy. Evil! Evil! Grandpa, that's a lamp. He is so damn dramatic for absolutely no reason. Relate. Yes, so in this series, T Mamoru has no idea who he really is. His parents die when he's young because Japan and dead parents are synonymous. <laughs> so our second guardian to appear is Sailor Mercury. She's a shy girl who's very smart, so she feels kind of left out because everyone looks down upon her because of her intelligence. Some people even think that she cheats on tests. So she feels kind of lonely until she ends up meeting Sailor Moon. Which makes no sense to me, because, um, have you met her? <laughs> She's also a t the technical genius, so there's these ca If you don't know Sailor Moon, there's these two cats. One of the first one, Luna, gives her some devices that can help fight the evil villains. for saving my life, Miss Mizuno. How does he know I'm Sailor Mercury? Uh, yeah, Clark Kent. It's not like you actually hide your face when you transform. Or anything else. <laughs> so yeah, it's kind of weird that when they transform, they look completely the same to us, but apparently to the other characters, they look different. There's been a thing that apparently Takeuchi had said that there's this mysterious veil that covers their identities when they transform, which explains that, but I've never found any exact translation to confirm that. So it could be possible, it would make sense, but there's nothing to actually prove it. Drugs exist too, but that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> <laughs> so our next Sailor Guardian is Mars, the Guardian of Fire, Rei Hino. She is pretty much an angry, Sometimes can be very angry, very brash. Her and Usagi always get into arguments with each other. And she has like an estranged grandpa. She lives at the a temple of their grandpa. We don't know in this series anything about her parents. They're just not there. So it could be because it's Japan, they're dead, but who knows? And she also decides one thing that wasn't present in the manga, because a lot of these characters did not have character development in the fir at first, they do create in the anime here a love story between her and Mamoru, because she's like, well, since you're not interested in Mamoru, and, she li and he likes to insult you, Osagi, I'm gonna fall for him. <laughs> Literally in one case. Whacked out jokes are gonna totally wreck the great reputation that this shrine has built in the community. Yeah, now stop being such a stick in the mud about this. I mean, we all gotta have a little fun sometimes. Yeah, what she said! Usagi, <laughs> this is our shrine's problem, not yours. So stay out of our business! <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't you think that guy in front of us kinda looks like Tuxedo Mask? Huh? No, uh, not even a bit! No, get off! This jerk's nothing like him! Oh. 
Are you all right? Yeah, I think I'm okay. Oh, all right, great. Have a nice day. <laughs> like I said, she literally falls for him. <laughs> Best girl. <laughs> Yeah, of the original five, Jupiter is my personal favorite. Makoto Kino comes to the same area that Usagi lives, ends up going to the same school because she keeps getting kicked out of schools for fighting. She also fell in love with a boy who didn't love her. We never actually see the boy in this series. We just know that every time she sees a guy, he, he, she says, he looks like my, the guy who broke my heart. He looks like the guy who broke my heart. Now he looks like the guy who broke my heart. It's like an auction. Are you the guy who broke your heart? Do I hear a guy who broke your heart? Does he, he look like the guy who broke my heart? And, or as her voice actor said, she's quite thirsty in this series. I <laughs> dog <laughs> once. A dog looks like my old senpai. <laughs> I'm drawing a difference. You're killing time here. All right, no, it's Just play. Play. Okay, fine. <laughs> Why you? Oh wow! You're just exactly like my former love. She is super thirsty. <laughs> Yeah, she also apparently, in one episode there, they're like, oh yeah, she used to be a figure skater champion. So, cool, she can do all this stuff. There's actually one episode that drives me nuts in Sailor Moon R. They're like, hey Makoto, I didn't know you could drive a boat. Oh, I can do anything I want. <laughs> so, our last Sailor Guardian, who is the one that has the least amount of development in the first season because she comes in so late, she only gets one episode of development to her name. Is Ma wow, Mi uh, Minako Aino. She Minako starts off just like in the manga, she's Sailor V, but they don't really show her in this anime until way later on. And you come to learn that she had moved to Europe for a crime organization, fell in love with a guy, pretended that she died, and then moved back to Japan. Now, one of the differences in the manga is that she was a Kagamusha, which is a shadow double. So she was acting as Princess Serenity so that when anyone would come after, look for the princess to kill her, they would come after her. Because that's what they did in feudal Japan. If a leader was in danger of being assassinated, they would have someone who is meant to look like him be the one to travel while the actual leader would hide himself in with his soldiers. So that was her purpose there. And this, that was completely different. So here's a little look at her. A young man named Alan. Alan. And I fell in love. <laughs> Who's in there? She's... She's what? What happened? Oh. Oh. Don't worry, I'm here. I thought that remaining dead to them would probably be the best thing for their happiness. So that's just a little sampler on the Sailor Guardians. Unfortunately, with 109 episodes, you can't talk about much in an hour. So our main villain in this series, in the original anime, her name's Queen Beryl. She is basically your generic villain who sent, sends out gooing creatures and her generals to attack people and try to collect energy for their grandmaster, a giant energy being known as Queen Metallia. Why is it always energy? Even Megatron did that for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> but she also was the one who, in the past, decided to have the Earth, we can't, and with Metella's help, she invaded the Moon Kingdom to destroy it, and she fell in love with Mamaru, or King Endymion at that time. So here is just a small look at Queen Beryl. You still have not found the legendary Silver Crystal? No. Then you must search harder. The Great Ruler needs massive amounts of energy and can't be kept waiting. That's your command. Ah, <laughs> 
thousand years on free. Why are you protecting this girl? What loyalty can you have for the moon? You are the prince of the earth. Marry me, and you will be king of both the moon and the earth. No, Beryl. Don't you see what's happened? Metalia's evil energy has totally consumed you. Come to your senses. Free your heart from evil. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now. Oh, what's up, my dear? I figured out the answer to that question because writers are always tired. Energy is a very valuable resource. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. Now, Queen Beryl has four generals, the four kings of heaven that work under her. In the manga, they were actually Endymion's knights who then were t tricked into becoming evil and they helped destroy the Moon Kingdom and the Earth at that time. In this series, they do things differently. The first one, Jayite, he doesn't really have much development and he pretty much just has plain attacks. Uh, oh. And he's not a dad and he has dad jokes. <laughs> <laughs> now, Nephrite, the second general, again, the problem with like, the manga is each of these generals pretty much die within one to two chapters from their appearance. Yeah. So, of course, the anime being, like I said, Monster of the Week, Toku type show, they've got to stretch this out for a year long series. Jadeite, after becoming just your generic first general type character, Nephrite they did a lot of interesting stuff with. One of Usagi's best friends, Naru, meets this guy and she instantly falls in love with him, even though they're like thousands of years apart, kind of creepy. <laughs> and so they just had all this development throughout his arc of with building a relationship between the two, the two, and despite the age differences, it was actually well done. Oh, Nefrit, you came! Die! Did we get him? I'm not giving up the Dark Crystal. <laughs> it's still better than Twilight. Oh! Is it? Is it? I, yes. I will take anything over Twilight. So the next two generals, the reason I put Zoysite and Kunzai together is because they ended up being, they made these two lovers in the series. And they did a lot of interesting stuff with them. Um, Zoysite had his own set of monsters that he would use to create, turn people using these rainbow crystals. Kunzite would turn people into monsters, but it was an interesting dynamic with this relationship, especially because at one point you're like, well, does Kunzite actually not love Zoysite and is just using him? But then as they show later on, they actually do truly love each other. She's quite lovely, too. <laughs> you're cruel, Kunzite. How can you suggest she's more lovely than me? Underneath, she's just an ugly monster. Shh, I'm kidding. Don't let envy ruin your beautiful face. Look at me. Go away! This rose can't compare with the beauty I see in your face. Thank you, my dear. In the original anime, they actually turned Zoysite into a woman. For the dub. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Huh? <laughs> to be fair, I'd scream at that many rats. <laughs> Unless Yuki Soma came out of the woodwork. Don't be condescending to me, you presumptuous dress-up dolls! Return Tuxedo Mask! I mean Endymion! You have no right to keep him! <laughs> I'd be willing to let him go if you just hand over the silver crystal. Stop it! <laughs> Even if you 
ran out right now and bought us the finest post couture trend setting designs as replacements. I, I don't get it. member of the Dark Kingdoms, Four Kings of Heaven! You can't make me yell out refresh ever! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it kind of defeats the point when he already yells out refresh in that scene. As I talked about earlier, there are, this show does Monsters of the Week. Jedi, Jedi's monsters are just creatures that clone will clone a person to take their form, to act as them. Nephrite would use objects that would transform into monsters. Zoysite used these things called rainbow crystals that was original to this anime where the silver crystal had been separated into seven rainbow colored crystals and so it just turned humans into monsters that Usagi would have to heal and then Kunzite trying to find who the princess was would turn people into monsters for like a beauty salon, a ski instructor and of course the car our guardians just happen to always fall into those traps. Roll, roll. So here's just a small look at a couple of the Monsters of the Week. Shay's delivery on that line. Mm -hmm. so and the anime on Usagi's face, the animation is just so hilarious. So that's the bulk of the Sailor Moon, the first anime series. After the series continued on for several more years and ended with Sailor Stars, that was pretty much it. Toei decided in 2003, well, you know what? These li the Toku show, live action shows we're doing are so good. They're working out. Kamen Rider we brought back. Sentai's still going strong. Let's do something new. Let's turn Sailor Moon into a live action series. And so they did. They hired a writer named Yosuko Kubayashi, whom you may know who has done anime adaptations of Death Note, Attack on Titan, unfortunately Claymore. And she has done a bunch of Sentai and Kamen Rider series as well. She took on the reins of doing a live action series. Now, in the long run, the series had a lot of great ideas. The problem is, it didn't have the budget to keep up with these ideas, which is unfortunate. But first, the Usa one thing that I do like about the series, even though they do look kind of goofy, is as I talked about earlier where everyone could tell the Sailor Guardians when they transform that they're essentially the same people but no one could tell. In this series, they would have the actors with their normal hair and then have them wear wigs when they transform, which even though it does look kind of silly, it was a clever idea. Also with Usagi, she still has a lot of the same traits, but she's also a lot dumber. <laughs> and, and they did age up the Sailor Guardians to actually be high school students versus middle school to kind of help with the dynamic for the age differences between Usagi and them versus Mamoru. Especially because now it's no longer a middle schooler going out with a college student. And a lot of the basics are the same between them, but there are some differences I will touch upon later on.
always show their underwear in the show. I love Toei with their separation ground scene. They've been using that since the 1982 Sentai series Dynaman. Yeah, I noticed. So, now, there were some differences. Like, Mercury essentially started out the same. She's the shy girl. However, one difference is, in this series, all these girls are pretty much shy at this point. Even if you know the character Matoki, who runs the arcade in the original anime, he's like outgoing, talks to everyone. In this series, he's, all, he's also shy. He has pet turtles that he loves. He runs a, they do a karaoke bar instead of an arcade. And it's just like, well, everyone's shy, so it kind of takes away that individual dynamic. But our first one here, Mercury, besides having some of the same traits, she also has a really weird taste in clothing. In the scene you're going to see in a moment, there, Jupiter is going to be going out with Matoki because they developed this relationship between those two, and they're having Jupiter try on all these different clothing clothing because they have the phones that when they take a picture of something, they will they can then wear that outfit. So they're just going through and they're like, well, none of these clothes are working. How about Mercury? How about Ami? We don't have her clothes. I mean, she can try out the clothes from her. So she has a really weird taste in clothing, and also you're going to get a taste of what the fight scenes are like in this series which are not that great, and as she said, a lot of underwear shots. grin on Mercury's face when she's all like, yeah, so cool, oh, uh, oops. <laughs> so Sailor Mars, shy girl, but this time we also get to find out that her father's a politician who practically ignored her mother when her mother was dying in the hospital. Dead parents again. Which also I forgot to mention earlier, Jupiter's parents are also dead. Oh, wow, thank you for bringing down the happiness in the room. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's dead, I'm so sorry. Yes. Yeah. I thought they just died to die. <laughs> well, that's why in Japan parents always go overseas to work because they won't die if they're not in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna press play before we talk about death way too much. <laughs> And then, as I said, with Jupiter, they pretty much did retain the same story. She comes, she comes back I'm there because the wind told her to, so she was destined to be there. She, a boy broke her heart, so she didn't want to be there anymore. And then they started this relationship between her and Matoki. Jupiter! <laughs> 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 
早く Now, Monaco is the one they actually they did the most changes on. In the anime series, she wanted to be a pop star, an mm -hmm. idol. In this series, they made it that she already was a pop star. With the same song over and over. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, her song is C'est la vie in French, but C'est la vie. Of course, we were talking about not talking about everyone dying, but she's also dying from a disease throughout the series. What a twist. So all, throughout the series, she's also trying to train Mars to take over as leader of the Guardians. And the strange thing is in this series, they never fully work as a team of all five, except for in one episode, when, yet, when she, they actually do work together. Most of the time it's one of them's off in battle somewhere else, or dealing with girl problems or boy problems. You make that sound so derogatory. Ah! <laughs> Whatever. Air high five. And also, in this one, they did keep the concept that she is the Kagamusha for the Moon Princess, like the manga did. Which was, I mean, which was cool, because you hadn't seen that done in any adaptation outside of the manga at the time. And she has the longest transformation sequence. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have the budgets to do CGI cats, Luna and Artemis are take the form of plushes. <laughs> There's not much to say. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't say they were good plushes. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm going to let these next two run without a break. First, Queen Barrow in this series, she's very forgiving. Like, her minions keep failing and failing, and she's like, well, just do better next time. Okay, just do better next time. Next time you'll do it. I'm getting impatient, but next time. And then the... With this series, they also kept the concept that the four kings of heaven were the generals of Endymion, but they felt because Usa uh, Endymion and Princess Serenity's love destroyed the world, that he I mean, they can't work with him again because of that. <laughs> お前たちなど滅びた月の王国の残影にすぎ。プリンセス友とも大人しく月で眠っておれば良いものを。だがもう遅い。お前たちのプリンセスも。
大いなる闇の祝福を与えよ破滅だお前まで先生に興味を持ったのか悪いと思い出したところでお前の頭を支配するのがベリルかなあの男に変わるだけだぞプレーダス君ってとお前は前世でマスター覚えてるだろお前こそ覚えてるはずだマスターが何をしたか<笑>だからこそ前世と同じ劇を繰り返されたマスターと共にあるべきだ違うな前世ある限り全ては繰り返すその前に私が終わらせるグンタイトお前は出ていて私は前世を思い出すお前の出る幕ではない何お前は下がってろ意外にしようか何を話してやるかとにかく前世とは何だ分かんないよ実は分かんないマスター Now, when you saw the scene of them arguing, that seems to be pretty much the basics of their characters during the entire series. As it starts after a while to feel like a pinky in the brain skit. So, being that the series was a weekly long Togu show, just like the original anime, they had some monsters of the week, which were quite weak. <laughs> Now, oh, and one other thing, if you are a Power Rangers Season 1 fan or a Junior Ranger fan, they actually had reused the Golem Putty costumes for foot soldiers towards the end of this show. They just put hoods on them. <laughs> <laughs> Now, the live action series did also have a lot of original concepts. The first is one, I, it's Princess Serenity. Now, in this series, you're probably thinking, well, she was Princess Serenity before. But what they did in this series is Princess Serenity is a maniacal, psychopathic, sadistic killer who doesn't care if anyone lives as long as only Endymion lives. Yikes. <laughs> concept they did in this was Kun's like kidnaps Ami and turns her evil into like the most coolest character in the entire show because she is so maniacal and badass when she's evil. Yes. It's probably the best arc in the live action series. Yeah, yeah. this is the highlight. <laughs>
To counteract Mercury being evil, evil, they decide to do something with Luna and give her a human child form who could transform into a guardian, titled Sailor Luna. She's kind of annoying and yet adorable in a way. <laughs> Toys are us, by the way. Kunzite is not amused. <laughs> so our last original character in this series was a girl named Mio. She was a counter, another pop star, but she was also pretty much meant to represent a young version of Beryl because she wanted to find out where Endymion Tuxedo Mask was to see if it was the person she fell in love with in the past. So here is just a really quick clip of her because she is one of the worst characters in the show. Yeah. With the coolest outfit ever, in my opinion. Oh, yeah. I would so wear this if I was younger. What's that? Reuse no. Oh, okay. No, but they're they're a cool concept. They're actually their names are sword and shield. So one always does defense and one always does offense. Okay, it, it just it just looks like characters from Reuse. So that's pretty much the basics of the live action series. For the anniversary back in 2012, Toei announced that they were going to do a new Sailor Moon. Three series. years later. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, after a while. They did release a new series called Crystal, which was a more accurate adaptation of the manga. Of course, being that it is pretty much an accurate adaptation of the manga, anyone, everyone that's not named Usagi or Mamoru do not get development. The plot moves by so fast that you're just like, what? Wait, wait, where did we get there? And also, the show got a lot of controversy because of its really poor animation that so bad that Toei had to go and reanimate scenes for the video release. But they also decide, hey, CGI is cool. Let's use CGI transformation scenes. It worked in Pretty Cure. Now, with Usagi <laughs> I have here first in Mamoru, they're kind of the same in concept, except also in this series there's no such thing as physics. The guardians can fly if need be because the villains can fly. And that's pretty much how they I go through everything with this show. But I do... God damn you. One thing I do like, though, is with her tiara attack, there's some continuity, because in one episode she uses it, and the next, she doesn't have it. You know we could just show and not tell, right? Uh, I love you. Uh, not really. Uh, I do. It's not my fault the other kids always get to school on time. Moon
space. I shall remember your name, Sailor Moon. You can stay in touch with her by using your communicator. Huh? You mean this? Isn't it just a regular old watch? Luna, what's the matter? Why are you talking to yourself? Why does he think she's talking to herself? He did hear the cat, right? There's no need to scream. Uh, are you in junior high too? No, I'm a high school student. Mama no, I'm an asshole. Ah. Asabu, private high school? So it brainwashed the humans and attacked the moon. Only the young prince Endymion was immune to its evil power. He fought to save his people and the princess he loved. But alas, while protecting you, he was slain. <gasps> when he fell, so great was your despair that you took your own life. Romeo and Juliet, folks. A rose will bloom, it then will fade. This is why Romeo and Juliet is a comedy. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Well, the most accurate teenage love story in existence. It all ends poorly. <laughs> <laughs> so after going through the basics with, um, we, of course, we have our four guardians. I put them all together because there's really not much to talk about with them and Crystal. Ami's the shy girl, smart and everything again. Ray, on the other hand, is not the hot-headed freak who always gets mad at Usagi. She's basically just another one. Oh, it's Usagi. Then we have Jupiter, who is, again, she comes there, parents are dead, but she doesn't really care about people who look like the guy that she fell in love with. And we actually do see the boy that broke her heart. And now with Venus, though, they also, of course, kept the concept of her being the Kagamusha, as we'll see. So, let's keep going. You saw that cat was an angel? Uh, oh, just ignore me. I'm not making sense. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Speaking of Usagi, where is she anyway? Her teacher gave her detention for falling asleep in class again. <laughs> that does sound like her. I don't know you anymore. Are you on your way home? Oh, hey there, Kino. I thought we could walk home together. Didn't I tell you? I have a girlfriend now. So, yeah, I'm gonna walk home with her from now on. Sailor V's red mask! So you really are her! How rude. Show some respect. While it is true she is Sailor V, there is more. My mistress is of the Moon Kingdom, Silver Millennium. She is heiress to the sacred, legendary Silver Crystal. She is Princess Serenity. Wrong! For the honor of Greyskull! Yes, as you can see in the manga, they had a sword that they could use to share with each other, although Venus would be the one who would wield it the most since she's supposed to be the leader of the team. Now, Queen Beryl has a little bit more character development in this version, even though it's not very much. She was a maid of the Earth Kingdom who fell in love with Endymion because he fell in love with Princess Serenity. She unleashed an evil energy to destroy the world. Once Queen Matonia fully revives, she may indeed devour the whole world and beyond. But there's no turning back. Not since that fateful day when I first stumbled upon Deepoint. It was as if some force had drawn me there and wanted me to discover the Dark Kingdom. With my own hands, I broke the seal and freed Queen Mertalia. There's from more her. problems than just that. Look at her hand, that's kind of creepy. It may have been my destiny to release her, but when it comes to the legendary Silver Crystal, I won't hand it over so easily. I shall keep the legendary silver crystal for myself. That the entire planet will be mine for the taking. Now, the Four Kings is where it sort of deviated from the manga of it. In the manga, they pretty much die one right after the other. In the anime, they, in this, they decided to do something different. Back when the manga was completed for this arc, 
Takaichi had this idea like, you know, I should have did something more with the four kings of heaven. I should have made them boyfriends to the Sailor Guardians. Oh, well, I'm going to do a piece of fan art for one issue and just to show that I wish I had done that, but that's it. So Toei decided, hey, well, let's take that idea and give these characters more character development. It doesn't work out so well for them. They're still pretty much brainless individuals, but it is kind of cool to see them all fight at one time. I am Jadite, Knight of Patience and Harmony. I am Nephrite, Knight of Wisdom and Comfort. I am Zoisite, Knight of Purity and Healing. I am Kunzite, Knight of Virtue and Affection. We four pledge you our service. We would lay down our lives to protect you. I thank you, brave knights. Together we shall keep the Earth prosperous and peaceful. <laughs> did have a couple of monsters of the week that were in the manga, but they're such an afterthought that they're not even worth talking about. So that pretty much concludes my comparisons of the three different versions of the Dark Kingdom arc. Any questions? Yes? Well, this isn't really a question, but you don't mind if I point out something that I noticed? Hmm. Uh, apparently in the, in the live action Sailor Moon, apparently Mars is the only one that has like the color like pull up above her like her elbows yes. while the others are below. And it's like, that's weird. They actually, yeah, they did do a little bit with designs. Uh, Jupiter has a, um, like a bracelet on her leg, oh. on her ankle, whatever it's technically Oh yeah, called. and then Mars had like something like on her skirt, like, like a little diamond on it. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, and then Mercury, her uh, whip chain is pretty much her belt. Any other questions about the series? If not, I hope, oh, yes. Is that so did, uh, so did the live action series ever go beyond the Dark Kingdom arc? No. no. They pretty much, the live action series was a failure. Um, it it's originally was supposed to be a 52 episode show, was cut down to 49 episodes, but then they did a two direct video arcs stories, one that was all on how, showing how Venus became Sailor V, and then a wedding story. Yes! Okay, now I just have way too much and I'm trying to not give as okay. many spoilers. <laughs> well, I hope you guys all enjoyed the panel. We have business cards up here if you want our YouTube channel. I have we've been doing a bunch of recordings over the weekend of cosplay costumes and everything and I have recorded this we'll put this up on there as long as I don't get a copyright strike <laughs> otherwise have a good night Thank you. Thank you.